Uh, very good afternoon to everyone uh, here today uh, and a very warm welcome to you from Face Pulse. Uh, week on week, we've been uh, you know, hosting webinars with uh, guests from across the industry, uh, mainly from products and services that benefit higher education institutions. Uh, in a first of its kind, uh, today we are starting a session which we have, you know, in a preliminary phase, termed it as Industry Connect. So for the TPOs uh, attending today, just to give you some context of what you can expect from these sessions, uh, we hope to bring uh, uh, the recruiters who recruit graduate talent from engineering campuses across India, not only recruiters, but also people who are uh, part of the onboarding teams, part of the lead teams that lead graduate talent in these companies to uh, hopefully come and shed some light on what uh, IT companies as well as product companies uh, look for in graduate trainees or graduate recruits. And it is not going to be just a one way street wherein uh, uh, you know our guests come and tell you what and how you need to prepare your graduates in. Uh, it is also going to be a dialogue as in we hope to enable a dialogue between the TPOs and the companies so that uh, you can also share some insights on how uh, things can be a little better in terms of the inter industry uh, institute interactions, especially with regards to the transition of a student from uh, his student life to a graduate recruit as they start work in a company. So today I have with me Apsara Mukashi, who is head of entry level programs at ThoughtWorks. I also have Sonam Agarwal and uh, also from Chandapa Jagadish. Uh, Chance, as we call him, uh, he's been part of our uh, ThoughtWorks onboarding team with FACE. And uh, so I welcome all the three of you here. And I'm going to quickly introduce the speaker for today, who is Apsara. And after Apsara presents her slides, we'll also be open to some interactions. We'll take questions and all three panelists here will be happy to uh, uh, you know, assist in uh, clarifying things if you have any queries or questions on the presentation itself. Uh, so, uh, Apsara started her career as a trainer and uh, when she started, she was teaching C and C++ uh, in, uh, in various companies and uh, she predominantly worked in, uh, just give me a second, please, sorry. See, she predominantly worked as a corporate trainee, uh, but then she joined Persistent in Pune as a uh, a Q&A uh, and a quality analyst and soon after understood the world of software delivery. In 2008, she joined ThoughtWorks and since then, she's been having a lot of answers for questions related to uh, delivery and culture, which made her realize ThoughtWorks is a wonderful place to learn professionally and personally too. She started as a QA in ThoughtWorks and played multiple roles like iteration manager, uh, release manager, staffing manager, general manager for one of uh, one of the Bangalore offices of ThoughtWorks. Now she heads the entry level programs for ThoughtWorks India that looks at different onboarding practices for ThoughtWorks, thought workers joining at the entry level uh, with zero to two years of experience. She also has two lovely daughters, age 10 and eight respectively. And her spouse is the director of data platform at LogMe and Incorporated. And uh, they both love watching movies and traveling. Uh, Apsara is a big yoga fan. She practices yoga daily and it, uh, it has taught her a very valuable lesson in life that consistency and practice helps someone achieve what they actually want. So with that introduction, I welcome Apsara once again and I want to hand over the mantle to you for your presentation. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for the lovely introduction. Um, and I have with me uh, my team here. Uh, you know, I have uh, Chanapa Jagdish. Uh, he leads the uh, PLUS program. It is one of the tracks of, uh, of the entry-level programs. And I have uh, Sonam. Uh, she's the program coordinator for all the programs that we do under PLUS. Uh, so we have multiple uh, tracks for entry-level programs in ThoughtWorks in order to onboard uh, all thought workers who are between zero to two years of experience. And uh, this particular track is where we step out of ThoughtWorks and we partner with a lot of, uh, you know, different partners uh, like FACE uh, who help us connect to uh, multiple colleges. Uh, and, and that's where, you know, we are having this, uh, uh, you know, webinar. Uh, cool. So um, 
uh, Chans and Sonam, you want to introduce yourself quickly before I start. By then, I'll just uh, share my screen. Okay. Sonam, you want to go first? You're on mute, I think. Yeah, I thought you were not on mute. Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sonam Agarwal, and uh, I recently joined ThoughtWorks as a program coordinator. Uh, it's it's just about a month uh, that I've joined uh, ThoughtWorks, uh, the PLUS team. Uh, before that, I was uh, I was into uh, learning and development. In the, I worked in three, four different companies. And prior to this job, I was working as a physical design engineer uh, in a semiconductor company. Uh, then uh, now I'm back to my HR profession. Uh, because, I mean, mainly because I, I love that work. I, I love people interaction and online engineering is a very isolated job, I feel. So <laughs> that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah, so uh, welcome to all of you. Thank you. Over to you, Jan. Thanks, Sonam. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, I feel like I'm the most underdressed panelist here. So <laughs> hi, folks. Uh, Chance here. Um, I lead the program called PLUS, uh, stands for uh, Partner Led Undergrad Sourcing and Training. I think that name itself tells a lot. Uh, ThoughtWorks India is growing at a rapid pace, right? And uh, we are at that point where we want to scale. We want to leverage our partner strengths at sourcing talented folks. And we want to create integrated programs around training, around internship, and then eventually moving on to full time roles, right? Uh, that's what I lead. Um, I have a, a development background. I have, I have like born in the consulting world, so to say. I have been with Cognizant, was with Cognizant for a long time, uh, then joined ThoughtWorks, briefly left ThoughtWorks, went to Equal Experts. Then I am now back into ThoughtWorks. So overall, I'm with ThoughtWorks for the last three years. And yeah, this is my second stint. And ThoughtWorks has always been this company, uh, which has uh, let me uh, broaden my skill set and also my uh, contributions. The first time I joined, uh, I got to expand my technical skills. And now I'm on the program management path. So happy to be here. And yeah, uh, thanks to you folks for coming to this uh, webinar today. Over to you, Apsara. Yep. So are you all able to see my screen? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, it's... Sorry. Uh, so you will have to uh, press. I've made you presenter, Apsara. So you'll have to uh, just below the video icon, there is a screen share icon. If you can press yes, that, it will come online. Yeah, I did that. Uh, it's green right now, okay. but I'm not sure whether it is okay. sharing the screen. Uh, it is actually not. Uh, can I? Do you mind if I run the slides? Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Okay, one second. Yeah. Right. I think. Uh... Maybe we, maybe yeah. I can just stop off while uh, this is. So, uh, like I said, uh, at ThoughtWorks we have this function called as entry level programs, uh, which is dedicated to look at what are the different aspects that are needed with respect to zero to two years experienced, uh, uh, you know, individuals. Uh, what kind of journey do they need? What kind of onboarding do they need? They are starting off their journey. They are starting off their uh, professional life. So, what kind of a journey do they need? Where do we, uh, you know, where do we tap more of this talent? Right? Can we have more partners involved, uh, you know, in in this journey? And that's where all of these are coming together in the entry level programs. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, talk about, uh, you know, what are the what are the different onboarding aspects that we have, and I'll take a little bit of help from Chans also over there. Um, uh, but on top of that, I'll, I will be talking about um, what is that we all can do together, uh, right? Like you, you all are here uh, uh, and then we can see what are the different things that we all can do together. Uh, so quickly, the next slide, uh, uh, Vijay. So uh, quickly on the introduction again, I think you all uh, already know, uh, Vijay spoke about uh, all of this, like the, how my journey has been. But there are three things that I identify myself uh, as like, you know, my identity, uh, given that I've been here for 13 years now, my my personal identity has become of that of a thought worker. Uh, whether I am uh, talking about tech, whether I'm talking about open source with people, whether I am in a, uh, in a group conversation with my friends who mostly are from IT industry, and when I see them asking questions, discussing questions, where I find myself, uh, 
uh, in a position where I am able to answer a lot of delivery related questions because I have gone through it and I have done a lot of uh, things that that and ThoughtWorks is known for delivery. Uh, so I see myself as a true blue thought worker, uh, not just with respect to the tech and practices part of it, but also with respect to culture. Uh, how are women treated over here? What do we think about the LGBT community, people with disabilities, women in leadership, women in tech? all of it all of that uh, put together and it's not just few of us uh, who talk about it it is there in the dna of every thought worker so uh, slowly somewhere uh, the my professional life uh, has also impacted my personal life um, where uh, thinking about culture about practices i am uh, you know it, it has slowly seeped in into in a good way in my personal life as well so i i one of my identity is that of a thought worker Second is obviously uh, as a family person, I have two lo uh, lovely daughters and I, I, I love kids. So uh, I think, you know, that that really uh, makes up my world. If that's my world, my world revolves around that. Uh, so, yeah, that's my second identity. And third one is um, right from the very beginning when I was a young girl, uh, I used to love yoga, though I didn't follow it all the time. Uh, but once uh, I had my daughters. Uh, after that, I realized that this is this is the form of exercise that really helps me. So I entered into the yoga world with thinking of of it as an exercise. But soon, soon I realized that there is there are larger larger things uh, associated with yoga, and it's more around mindfulness. I really love it, and like which I uh, told in the beginning, for me the grit, the perseverance, um, the continuity, the uh, the the fact that you have to go, you can go slow, but be consistent and you'll get there. Uh, that has come from yoga by practicing yoga. So that's me. Um, any, uh, yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll come to a bit of questions in, in some time once I have one, uh, uh, you know, uh, a set being completed. So Vijay, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, so this is what we have for today. Uh, I would like to introduce ThoughtWorks to you. Uh, what are the different things that we have in ThoughtWorks? Uh, uh, why ThoughtWorks is so uh, is so famous in the IT industry? Uh, we are uh, we are considered as uh, inspiration, inspiration, uh, inspirational, and uh, uh, you know a lot in terms of the, the progressive mindset, um, and also pioneers in a lot of things. Uh, so, you know, would like to talk a little bit about it. Um, I would like to talk about what are the what all are the work that we do um, and who we are looking for uh, and basically about the entry level programs. What are the uh, different uh, different parts of it? Um, yeah, so we can go next. So if, if you look at this, um, we are a global community. When I say global community, we are across a lot of regions globally. Uh, global community of passionate individuals, you will see in every role, whether an individual, uh, whether an individual is a BA, QA, Dev, a PM, uh, someone from finance, someone from legal team, or someone from admin team, or wherever for that matter, you will see each one of them very, very passionate about their own work. So we are a global community of passionate individuals. Uh, for us, our purpose is to revolutionize the software uh, design, creation, and delivery, uh, while also advocating for positive social change. And you will see those aspects uh, when I, you know, go through the entire deck. Uh, it's a global community. We are 8,000 plus now. Uh, we are in 17 countries. We have 43 offices. It's more than 26 years for us now. In India, we are, I think, more than we are reaching 3,000 now. Uh, there are multiple locations in India. Uh, Bangalore was the first office, followed by Chennai and Pune. Then we started off in uh, Gurgaon, Hyderabad, Coimbatore, and Mumbai. Uh, so, like, we are there in mostly all the corners of uh, India. In India, it's it's around 20 years for us now. Uh, just because we are there on this slide, uh, by next year, uh, the hiring numbers are are pretty high, and uh, the, the grad numbers or the zero to two years experience number itself stands at 600 for us. Uh, so that's something that we are looking at. That's where we are seeing that how can we start uh, early? How can we start talking to the colleges early? Yeah. Uh, next. 
So if you look at it, uh, I won't go deep into it. I can actually talk about it for an entire day. Uh, but every organization has its why, which allows us to take decision. Like even the smallest decision, if me and Sonam are discussing something and we are, you know, there are two options for us. This why helps us, uh, you know, take the decision. Uh, that, that's what it's all about. When, when Chans is talking to all of you or to all the partners, uh, there'll be multiple, you know, um, uh, multiple options for him to take a decision. This helps him take a, take a decision. Our why is to create uh, extraordinary impact on the world through our culture and technology excellence. We look at it from five lenses. We want to revolutionize the tech industry. We want to amplify the positive social change. We want to foster an amazing, vibrant com community of diverse and passionate technologists. Uh, we also want to endure commercial success. That's where the business comes from. That's where everything runs, right? The entire uh, ThoughtWorks runs from the uh, from the revenue and the business. And obviously, to be an awesome partner to our clients, they have their ambitious missions. They are thinking about developing something uh, within themselves, and and uh, that's what is one of our lines. So these are the five lenses through which we want to achieve what is there in the uh, in between and everything around it are our values we tell each and every individual at thought works whether they are uh, you know uh, new thought workers whether they are grad thought workers or you know anybody they need to be courageous there is a lot of integrity that is obviously required they need to always pursue excellence uh, always think of global first it never has to be always only my office my uh, my country uh, you know, when you think about global cultivation, we have a culture of cultivation. Um, there are multiple cultures in, in all organizations. You might see control culture. You might see comp uh, competing culture, uh, collaboration culture. Uh, ours is by and large collaboration and cultivation culture where we, we believe in investing in uh, others. Uh, for us, for every individual, uh, for me, my growth is to ensure that I invest in some uh, in someone and help him or her grow. Uh, that's that's the cultivation culture we have. Um, curiosity, obviously, inclusivity, autonomous team. These are all the different values that we apply uh, while doing the lenses, while looking through the lenses and achieving our why. That's our purpose. Uh, right. Uh, quickly, uh, I think these are some of our uh, capabilities. There are, there are multiple of them, and I would like a uh, chance to just quickly run through it and add anything that he would want to add there. Because he comes from a PS background. He's a lead consultant developer, and he's a developer at heart. Yeah, thanks, Apsara. So if you look at these uh, different spheres of capabilities, right, and you can uh, sort of understand where all ThoughtWorks is engaged. Uh, if I can give you an example of, say, a 150-year-old bank or a cutting-edge retail supplier or even a government entity, they are good in what they do and they are masters in their domain and they also know how to run a successful business. But still, they want consultants, right? It's almost like telling that Roger Federer is the best tennis player in the world, but he also needs a coach, right? So that way, uh, they know that they need to evolve right and they know that uh, there are people who may not know their domain as well as them obviously but they're still invested to advise them like in a capability and that is what we offer we are tech at core and we have a certain methodologies that you see over here and certain experiences that uh, we can abstract from our uh, engagements and we know what works and what doesn't work well and also we always go with a contextual model there is no cookie cutter or a bouquet of answers that we go with we always go with possibilities and we are able to have these very uh, sort of outcome driven conversations with our clients and then assess what possibilities that we can do together and also based on our technical expertise we can help them get there and it's always about enabling them like apsara mentioned that uh, her growth is in uh, like cultivating or mentoring somebody we also believe not just to fill space or to do business we also believing in like actually enabling our customers and then do the right thing by them right so it's always about creating value for our customers and then here you see there are a lot of sort of opinions being put out there and then multiple sort of business uh, sort of directions here so we have a lot of technology drivers and you may have seen a article like a, a once in six months article called as technology radar that's mostly our opinions on what technologies can be adopted by the industry and what we actually believe in 
there is also a newer edition called looking glass this is one of business drivers now that what a business can do in the next two years or what immediate trends do they need to look at it could be augmented reality it could be green computing uh, it could be like uh, say like how not to be a digital hostage and so many things right so all of this is like value driven and it is a like contextual thank you thanks thanks a lot uh, chans uh, so like like chans said uh, whether it is cutting edge technology or if if there are clients who are, who already have developed something and now they want to do a transformation we are doing it all uh, these are few of the uh, few of our clients uh, few of the few of our clients whose name we could mention uh, you know uh, are allowed to mention there are many 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 more and we have done a lot of lo lot of transformational uh, you know work for them so these are few of the uh, cross industry uh, global clients that we have worked with we can go to the next one vijay yeah uh, talking about thought leadership uh, we've been involved in a lot of open source contribution we've been doing a lot of events and it's all community driven uh, every individual has a community to go back to uh, has an office to go back to and has their own project to go back to and in the community they they end up doing a lot all of them as QAs, one, one particular role they come together, the designers, the UI developers, the developers, the QAs, the BAs, they all come together in their community and they take the responsibility of a lot of events, a lot of sharing sessions, uh, onboarding new, uh, new thought workers in their role, uh, hiring, uh, capability building, and they also do a lot of things together where they write blogs, where they write books, and these are few of the so if you see a lot of thought workers have written written a lot of books uh, so yeah that's that's one of the things that i want to wanted to call out that the thought leadership is uh, one it's there and it's also been encouraged a lot yeah uh, next one uh, again if you look at it uh, we've been uh, one of the top 10 contributing to uh, contributor to open source and i would like to talk about uh, bhamini.org it's the uh, open source hospital management system. Today, there are a lot of businesses that are built around it, a lot of organizations that are built around it, and we uh, we really take a lot of pride in uh, in uh, you know contributing to open source. Um, Selenium is something that was developed by us. Uh, Appium test development tool, which is like uh, which is a mobile uh, test uh, tool that was developed by uh, our QA community and then uh, you know a lot grew from there uh, we've developed a lot in the security as well so uh, when the community comes together and they think when they think of a new idea when they start developing it uh, the first thought that comes to their mind is let's open source it let's have others also contribute to it so you will see a lot of this sharing uh, sharing practices uh, when you know uh, uh, sharing practices of of knowledge uh, so yeah that's that's one of the uh, one of the things. Can you go to the next one? Um, right. Uh, we look for people who enjoy variety, who who love love to learn new things. Um, we also like people who love to be challenged uh, and not stay in the uh, you know status quo. Uh, folks who are passionate about technology and software excellence. Um, and I might say that if you know, um, if you see two, two thought workers talking about debating about a, uh, about a code, you actually would feel that they are enemies, <laughs> but they won't be because they're so passionate about the, the code itself. So, uh, you know, I, I keep seeing that. I have seen that all the time in my 13 years of career. Um, people who would want to deliver uh, agile software solutions using best practices such as TDD and pair programming. I think I would quickly talk about this. Uh, Developing a software is one thing, but developing it in a robust way, developing it in a proper way is another thing. And that's what we are known for in the industry. The way we ask questions to the clients, the way we do our inceptions and, del uh, and discoveries, the way we start iteration zero uh, in setting up the, con uh, the continuous development, continuous uh, uh, integration part of it, uh, the way we start with, with test-driven development, the way we uh, break down our epics into stories, stories into tasks, uh, development, desk checks, retros, feedbacks, showcases, that's what we're known for. And it, it just ensures that, uh, you know, we, we create a beautiful software, which is really robust, is readable. We don't need any documentation because our code is readable code. Uh, that's what we are known for. 
So we would like to have individuals who are passionate about this as well. It's not just about creating something. It's about creating it beautifully, uh, treating it as an art. Right? So that's one. And uh, obviously, people who care for social and economic justice. Uh, there are a few things that we really, really stand by. We stand with a lot of solidarity for a lot of causes uh, in the social space. And uh, we, we would hope that you know, people who join us are open about these ideas uh, and, and at least you know, look at you know, how they can start contributing to one of those. So that's, that's uh, one part of it. Uh, we can go to the next one. All right. Uh, before this, I think I would like to take some questions on uh, ab about ThoughtWorks because this is now moving to the onboarding part. Uh, so Vijay, if you have any specific questions uh, towards ThoughtWorks, uh, I would like to answer those now, maybe a couple of them. Sure. Uh, so I encourage uh, the audiences to please uh, share your questions in the Q&A. I'll be moderating the session uh, for the question and answers part. While you type your questions, I'll probably get started with uh, uh, my own questions, which I have gathered from the TNP community. So uh, whenever companies come recruiting in campuses, they're dealing with zero years. So you, you mentioned zero to two year window as an early recruit. Uh, but most of the audiences that are here today, uh, their sphere of influence is on a zero year candidate for whom uh, potentially ThoughtWorks could be their first workplace. And in such a situation, is there something that that is unique to ThoughtWorks that you know if they train their students in these areas, ThoughtWorks would find it easy to kind of onboard them or even help in the selection process? Uh, yes, yes, there are a lot of things, and in my last few slides, they do they do talk about it. And uh, I think what we're going to do is we are going to uh, try and put together a, a pre-joining learning module that we spoke about. Uh, that, right. that will be easier for all the, uh, you know, the students to go through. Uh, in general, anything about uh, test-driven development uh, and then the OOPS concepts uh, these and the clean coding practices, these are something that, uh, you know, uh, that the colleges can just close their eyes and include these, uh, you know, uh, and, and then, you know, ensure that uh, uh, they all learn about this. Uh, that's that's the basic one. Uh, anything else that you want to uh, say, Chance? What what will help them prepare? Yeah, I think uh, typically whenever I converse with students, um, I get a feeling that uh, they are more into buzzwords, right? That's the uh, that's the in thing today to know to talk about AI slash DS slash ML or talk about uh, certain languages like say only Python. And these languages and uh, these jargons are mostly frameworks, right? And which you build upon. So I think people are going for breadth, but I would like to also recommend that they also understand uh, like the uh, depth as well. Because once you learn a paradigm, it will be easier to create a mental map and try to expand from there. Otherwise, in a way, you're a consumer to most of these frameworks and uh, you quickly hop on from one tech to other tech, right? And then you see uh, your friend doing something else and think it is cooler. And there is also the notion of uh, older languages like Java being slow, being not so cool. Uh, but I feel even Java is evolving and Java is slow for a reason to actually support corporates on their longer term journeys and also they have made a, a design choice to be like backward compatible. So I feel the empathy for technology like like how Apsara mentioned should be a little higher and uh, people go after the how part like how do I do something in Python? How do I do something in ML? And that doesn't create opinions as such. I think we need to slowly move towards the why part. And that is what will help them gain more clarity and also help them shape into consultants, not only as a profession, but also as an individual on why they are doing certain things. And I feel one other thing I would again keep it very abstract is uh, people go after like popular frameworks and opinions, but I think we should, we should be more like uh, pragmatic and brave as well. Not everything that is out there in the world, which is the most downloaded software is the best, right? You should try to understand in your context what applies. So typically that's what I said earlier also. If there is a small sort of a client doing a milk delivery app in Bangalore with a very limited user base, uh, we they may not need the most bleeding edge solution. They may want to have something going for today and then you can iteratively work upon it. So there you need a lot of clarity on your technical depth and also the why part. Thank you. So I have the first question. It's from uh, Mr. Prashant, who is the director of placements at uh, Geetanjali College of Engineering and Technology in Hyderabad. 
so he's saying uh, does thoughtworks conduct any hackathons uh, or similar programs uh, or do, do you recruit through the hackathon model at all um mostly we do campus recruitments directly that happens from uh, our recruitment team um or we have uh, you know uh, partners like face along with whom we uh, we do like we're doing partnerships and then having people uh, from there uh we might have done hackathons in the past but right now it's not not anything which is a uh, regular for our hiring right so I have another question from Mr. Vishwa. He's asking if you consider a postgraduate student also on par with an undergraduate student in terms of campus recruitment. Uh, postgrads are uh, generally considered as early consultants for us. Uh, like you right. know, that's why I said zero to two years experience. Uh, right. However, if they don't have any uh, uh, employment experience at all, then they still will be uh, you know considered as grad because they they don't have any uh, experience. But typically, we would go for uh, postgraduates for the role of a BA because a lot of them end up doing. Uh, you know, the business analysis and a lot of things around after doing their uh, post-graduation. Uh, so, yes, but but they're not, uh, uh, you know, they if they have some experience, then they do fall into the early consultant bracket. Right. Okay. I also have a question from Mr. Ravi on uh, whether you consider, uh, you know, the students from all branches or do you only specifically look at uh, circuit branches? I think by that he refers to computer science, ITEC and Tripoli. Uh, yeah, it, it does help us if they are from, uh, you know, IT related branches, uh, but in the past we haven't, uh, you know, if, if someone comes from a different branch and they really good show good learnability and they have themselves, uh, you know, explored IT, they have explored coding and programming and they are interested, nothing stops them. All right. So I have a few other questions which are related to, you know, accreditation or visiting a particular campus. Maybe you can take them after your presentation, which would have shed some light on that. Sure, sure. I think we can we can move forward then. Yeah. Uh, so with respect to the uh, entry level sure, yeah. program tracks, um, I think what I would like to mention is uh, while we are where while there are different aspects in terms of we reaching out to colleges or colleges talking to us and we are looking at hiring or we are trying to uh, you know connect with them early on uh, these are that's one of the phases once they join thoughtworks what happens uh, once they join thoughtworks uh, we have this one year grad journey which our team completely takes care of in terms of talking to them knowing them getting to know them assigning mentors to them talking to their mentors um, looking at how they are doing in projects, what are the gaps, uh, what are the things that they are really doing great, are there things that we are getting as inputs that we can you know, feed it back to the program that we are uh, working with them. So that's the one year grad journey. We have our plus program through which we are talking to you today, uh, where we are partner partnering with uh, uh, you know, organizations like FACE uh, for, our, for our hiring training uh, training. Bit. Uh, we also have other onboarding programs like the internship that's that's called as Twaran. Twaran stands for uh, um, it stands for acceleration, and I will talk about a bit uh, in in the future slides. Uh, we so we have that we have that internship program. We also have internal projects that are that are running under entry level programs that act as a training uh, project for us. Uh, so there are multiple things that we have uh, as our uh, uh, onboarding. Uh, uh, program and the, the early consultants program is specifically for the one to two years experienced uh, mostly women hires um, th there we ensure that we are looking at a lot of learnability allow them to get onboarded through the different ELP tracks that we have and then uh, give them a, a one year growth journey so those are the ELP tracks uh, we can go to the next slide uh, Vijay sure yeah um, what I wanted to call out over here uh, is about training at ThoughtWorks. Uh, the reason why I call this out is you all are asking about what are the things that we should uh, teach our, uh, you know, our graduates or our, our undergraduates. Uh, what are the things that we should emphasize on? And I wanted to tell over here that more than a particular tech stack 
if you see i'm not mentioning i'll never tell you that oh you know what you get them into java and then they'll be through you you make them learn uh, uh, you know scala and they'll get through no that's not what it is and that's why i'm calling it out over here how is training at thoughtworks we teach every individual how to learn that's that's one big thing so if you just if you just uh, google on you know how to learn and different aspects of learning if you get your uh, uh, you know if you get your students to learn that that how do you go about learning that itself will help them a lot right so that's one part of it uh, second is how to opine if you have to give opinions you have to be prepped with with it so if you can push your students to give opinions in in if you can push your professors uh, to teach in a way where they are asking for opinions where they are asking them to prep so that they can come and give opinions where you ask them to do a respectful debate i think that will really help right uh, other thing is curiosity if you can ensure that you because all of these things are there will be uh, there will be students who are shy there will be students who are not talking there will be students who are not enough and they are not uh, you know present in the class maybe but then if professors ensure that they are curious they are asking questions and you know maybe maybe penalize them if they are not asking questions whatever it is but the more you push them to be curious the more it's going to help right um uh, seeing culture in action uh, i think there are a lot of things that we have we do at thoughtworks where where they get to see the culture in action and us partnering with face is where we actually make all of these things happen so what i'm trying to tell you is what are the things that you can already start in your colleges so that when when your students get selected for uh, for a program uh, you know then these are the things then these things are not very new to them you know few things that they can always uh, start doing uh, socratic way of delivering training uh, and i have few of my slides in the in, in in the future slides where i'm going to talk about how can i help you in that or how can me chans and sonam help you there but socratic is a way of delivery tra delivering training where you do not give an answer to a question asked you would give directions you would give options let the let the student think about the options and in with the method of elimination let him or her find out their own answer that's the socratic way of learning maybe you can note it down you can find it out you can practice it you can tell your professors to do that it really really helps not giving a straight away answer but letting them figure out the answer by you asking more and more questions so that's one of it uh, and obviously pushing them to challenge the status quo uh, every individual if you if you tell them because they are very young and over there you know they are there with you from first year from there itself if you can start telling them that you know it shouldn't be everything regular it should like if the if things are going regular then they should ask questions that what's going on why can't we change this you know they they should be in that uh, you know position to do it uh, so i had this slide specifically wanted to tell you that uh, when your students come through face or and and when they come to training these are the things that we push them to do apart from learning they will learn tech they will learn delivery practices they will learn how to run a project but along with that they will learn these things as well right so yeah we can go to the next slide um sure. uh, i'm just going to quickly run through this because otherwise we'll not get time towards the end for questions uh so when we do boot camps over here uh which we are trying to see how we can bring it outside of thoughtworks as well uh while coming to colleges maybe maybe third year of your co your college students or fourth year, year of your college students can we do few of these but what we end up doing in boot camps is we give a lot of exercises and a lot of discussions happen there are classroom sessions there are homework assignments they do tech talks uh, there are small a uh, seven minute pacha kucha presentations that they do about any topic right uh, there is a lot of offline reading that's been uh, shared they learn about clean coding practices they learn about object oriented design principles they learn about pair programming how to uh, how two people can together pair and develop a software they learn about tdd they learn about design fundamentals and they they learn about how to come together and deliver a software uh, next slide vijay sure yeah uh, these are our agile ceremonies for us 
daily standups are extremely important every weekly showcasing what we have developed to the client is called as a showcase a regular code reviews uh, we we keep pairing either you know two developers they pair or a developer and a QA would pair for a framework or a BA and a developer would pair to decide on the next set of stories what what tech changes are needed over there or we do tech huddles or the the kickoffs and the desk check uh, there are there are multiple of these agile ceremonies that we make them do while they do their learning so before they before they uh, join projects our team ensures that they learn all of these things uh, we have to figure out whether they learn it uh, at the uh, you know they come to thoughtworks and learn it or whether they are learning in your college itself and and we can we can definitely facilitate that uh, next slide vijay please sure yeah uh, i think i'll quickly skip this but for us these are all uh, aspects of development uh, whether it is a lot of them, uh, a lot, the, the first set comes from the analysis space, the business analysis space, where we look at the requirement analysis, how does the story look like, and the how to manage stakeholders. The middle part is mostly around developer, uh, a developer role, like getting the code to the production, uh, securing the application, front end development, the UI development, basically. And the last set is mostly around testing. How do we do API testing? How do we do bug bashes? What is the test pyramid? Uh, how do we set up a test framework? All of this together helps us to develop a robust software in an agile way. Uh, so these are the things that everybody learns before they are on. Yeah, next slide. All right, this is where I have uh, an ask uh, from all of you that how can you uh, and us together can make a difference, right? Um, we really, really believe in women in tech. So is your college a women only college or you have women in your college, girls in your college, or are you reaching out to uh, girls only schools, whatever it is, right? Uh, help us out there. We really, really want to up the game for all women coming to, to in, in tech. There are very less women in tech uh we want to really up the game and that's where we need your help right uh now now given the fact that you have access to a lot of colleges you have uh, access to a lot of schools i'm sorry high school right you have access to a lot of that uh can we start identifying a lot of them early from the high school itself is there something that we can do about it right uh do you have connects with different colleges where there are students uh, uh students with disabilities we would like to uh, explore we would like to see if we can put them through a training we can we would want to see if we can put them through any extended training right but we want to help that's what we want to uh, make a difference and and you all can help us over there uh, students from lgbtq community uh, obviously if you look at the lgbtq community the uh, you know transgenders or uh, you know lesbian gays bisexual you will see that when they are in their uh, uh, you know, in the 11, 12 standard, that is when they are, uh, uh, their study gets affected. Uh, trans, obviously, because society doesn't accept them. So studying and college is very, very difficult for them. But if you know, uh, you know, different colleges where they are, people, we are, we, we, will, we will try and see if we can collaborate and give them any additional support that is required, right? Uh, again, you will have access to a lot of tier three, tier four cities. You will have access to a lot of remote schools and colleges. You will know a lot of places where students are coming from underprivileged background. All of these along with the regular hiring, regular folks, regular, uh, you know, girls and boys along. Apart from that, we are open to make a difference in the society along with you you know whether it is women in tech whether it is students from underprivileged background i think you have access to a lot of it that's where we need your help the help that you will get from us is you know we will try to extend the onboarding as much as possible to help them out uh that's one uh, the ne the next uh, next slide vijay please yeah uh how can we collaborate um i was thinking about this in the morning uh, and i was thinking that uh you know if you all 
really need to understand uh, like how do we train the different the, our different style of training the different things that the boot camps that we do right uh, and you if you have it professors in your colleges we would be happy to do a train the trainer for them so that you can start uh, you know doing the basic trainings in your colleges itself right uh, we can come to your college for uh, you know workshops right that is also something which is possible we can do a couple of days of workshops in your college and then uh, see how how many people are interested and how they are uh, how they would love to you know say work with thoughtworks so that's that's another thing that we can where we can co collaborate we have our internship programs we can assign mentors so if we have people whom we can identify uh, you know maybe from the workshops or once the train the trainer is done if you are professors are uh, selecting someone and you know we can offer internships to them and then they can start um, being on on few things uh, you know they, they can be assigned mentors and they can start their learning journey pro from there itself um, you will have alumni connect if there are people over there uh, you know or uh, if there are thought workers already uh, here from your colleges you know that also uh, we can always uh, leverage uh, the pre-joining learning kit is something that we have to work on, uh, which me and Chans can uh, assure you that we'll come up with uh, at least something which is a sync. We can give it as the first, uh, what, first uh, cut, first EMI, <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, something which is like, a, a, a you know, a sync learning that can be given uh, first. And then we can look at what workshops we can do. Can we do a train the trainer? What are the different Udemy courses or any other courses that that you can do that your students can do, uh, which will help them? Um, yeah, that was one. So, and anything that you want to add, Chance, uh, in terms of how we can collaborate with colleges? So, I think one thought that comes to my mind is uh, generally right uh, from our school days like uh, middle class to high school days and then on to colleges we are mostly on an individual path and that's how we are assist and that's how we are uh, in a way geared for success uh, however the industry is different wherein it's more about a team context right there we value a team failure even more than an individual success and a lot of dynamics uh, a lot of skills uh, a lot of different cultural aspects comes into picture when an individual has to move and work together well in a team so i would like to yeah request the uh, professors and the audience over here right to think about that a little more on how we are going to enable a student to like uh, like actually gradually go on to be comfortable working as an individual working as a pair of individuals and then gradually working as a team i know that there could be certain assignments and certain like uh, projects that you would actually have for them uh, however in that every individual is different right somebody could be very good in articulating uh, their thoughts somebody could be very good in articulating their thoughts into code only or other people might not be comfortable with english as a language right or other people might have issues with say internet connectivity or uh, like the background they come from they were not able to express things so i think this is where we need your help to sort of think through this and i think the more we enable students in in line of like critical thinking in terms of like uh, trying to replay their learnability and trying to become comfortable with the new digital world right because these uh, students or kids they are born in the sort of a digital era they are digital natives where we are adopters of this right so they are more in tune of understanding how to deal with that but we need to enable them um, for them because most of the time we see the students are not even comfortable coming on the camera uh, and not comfortable addressing questions to us or they see an inherent hierarchy that they should behave in a certain way for us to see them as good whereas but we welcome them to challenges and to look and then sort of uh, uh, look at us as peers so i think all of this like cultural shifts needs to happen is what i feel yeah yeah uh, i think we can stop sharing uh, vijay we can take questions now sure sure all right so i have a list of questions uh, from uh, the previous break we took so i'll start with those questions and i also encourage others to please uh, share your questions now uh, so i have a question uh, from mr uh, Ashik, uh, what is ThoughtWorks' take on aptitude as part of the screening process for recruitment? Chans? It's very important, right? Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, um, 
like Absar also mentioned, it's not about Java, it's not about React because those are means to an end, right? We uh, want to sort of understand whether uh, people can use a particular language to actually implement the concept that they have in mind. So some people could be very new to programming if they're from electronics background or some people may have uh, learned oops from a long time. However, the intent is to understand whether they are able to uh, look at a problem statement uh, understand the possibilities and then translate their thoughts and translate um, their ideas into code in an elegant way and that code we know that we won't be like gold plated for sure right and we can always iterative like iteratively work on that and also once as people are writing the code they would need to um, sort of in a way defend or in a way uh, help us understand what the thought process is and that could be correct that could be partially correct and um, the next thing is people should be open to feedback right try to collaborate like i said it's not only an individual's journey it's also working with somebody else so our interviews are geared to give a taste of our culture so i feel aptitude is very important along with aptitude they would need to have certain depth is is when we can converse in that common context otherwise it becomes too vague okay uh, the next question is from mr lokesh uh, from geetam hyderabad uh, so he is asking, when do you usually start your annual campus hiring process, and uh, how do colleges, you know, become part of that process? It's starting now. It starts okay. now. By around uh, October, November time frame is when we would really want to ensure that we have, uh, uh, you know, given a lot of offers because a lot of colleges allow the last semester to be, uh, in, like they allow the uh, students to intern. Uh, with the with the organization that they have been selected for, uh, which means they should be having the offer letter by at least uh, you know October November time frame. Uh, so yes, a lot of hiring will start now, and uh, we will try to uh, you know cover at least if I'm not wrong 50% of it by October November, and then it continues. Then there are off campus hiring. Then there are uh, uh, you know other hire, you know other other as well. But a lot of it gets covered now generally during the campus hiring time right uh, the next question is from mr vinay chopra of guru nanak institution he's saying that uh, their institution is already working in the area of women empowerment so they would uh, like to uh, you know partner with thoughtworks i'll be happy to share mr vinay's contact after this uh, session to you uh, and maybe yes. you can take thanks a lot thanks vinay uh, next is from uh, next question is from Mr. Prashant. Uh, could you shed some light on the internship program? So, do you recruit interns specifically uh, for your uh, for ThoughtWorks? Uh, so, uh, I would I would answer a part of it. Um, one part of it is when uh, when the when individuals get hired directly from campus and when they are allowed internship from their colleges. Uh, they join ThoughtWorks and they go through uh, an internship program called as Twaran, uh, uh, where we identify mentors for them. We take the mentors to the train the training, uh, train the trainer for all the learnings that we do. Uh, our learnings are mainly around TDD, object modeling, clean coding practices, and the entire agile methodologies that I spoke about. So all the learnings, um, while they do one week of boot camp, after that, a lot of learning is done by the mentors while they are on projects. So they are placed on projects. Or they learn a lot of agile practices there as well. And then the mentors are also helping them out. It takes around four months. Till that time, they get graduated. Their exams come and then they get graduated. The another way of internship is for us plus program through which we are actually meeting today, right? Uh, where, uh, you know, I, I can ask chance to add more about it. Uh, but it is where we are partnering with organizations like FACE uh, and then we do selection and we take them through a training program post which they join us as interns for three months, three months or whatever is the uh, number. Uh, but yes, that's another way for, for our internship. Uh, anything you want to add, Chan, sir? I think we are fairly flexible on the on the internship duration and its kind. So the main intent is to spot talent early and through partnerships uh, with colleges and with partners. And it could be as early as even fifth or sixth semester, or even in seventh or eighth semester. And also the current year graduates, right? So we can look at at that, and we can look at uh, your appetite. You can look at the flexibility, and then design an internship program for that. There will be certain other constraints in terms of exams and college commitments. Uh, we have been like working around that as well, right? And 
and uh, we have an online mode of uh, learning and offline mode of learning and it's all important that our interns our students also ensure that they are not going to compromise their engineering degree as such they are going to balance that along with the internship and i think many colleges have a system wherein they give them like learning credits for being an intern in thoughtworks if that arrangement can be worked out a uh, more full-time opportunity would be like beneficial for both the parties very true and just to add to that we need not really start thinking about it only in the uh, third year or the fourth year it can start early we can help like you know challenge us over there like tell us what needs to be done and we will we will try and make it happen you have connection with high schools you want us to come there and start talking uh, start very very small we are all up for it uh, you know the 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 early we catch them the younger we catch them we can actually uh, you know try and see how we can mold them into the uh, you know the development practices and, and i'm very proud to see that we have really good development practices so you know anybody who learns it they will they will learn for life right uh, so while i wait for uh, some more questions i have my own question so from what i saw of the presentation uh, i see that thoughtworks is valuing more than just the domain knowledge that students might bring and that students might have been taught in their institutions so if i call it domain skills and i put another bucket and call it professional skills you talk about agile methodologies you talk about you know clean coding pair programming and the wider context of it all uh, so uh, if you were to call out something that can be potentially taught in a very modularized manner in campuses uh, what would what would be the top two things that they can students could be potentially exposed to apart from the domain skills uh, I would say uh, the test-driven development and clean coding practices uh, and okay. object-oriented programming. But Chance, you are the yeah. techie here. Yeah, I'll uh, take this question. So I think I look at this more as a like a learning pyramid, uh, Vijay. So at the bottom yeah. is the fundamentals, right? So I think in terms of aptitude, uh, if I can put it in that bucket, it would be like critical thinking, ability to replay the learning, and being comfortable. Uh, in terms of being remote and facilitating like talking in a group right so i think effective communication maybe right so these mm -hmm. you know the be so behavioral skills is when you need to equip people and sometimes people uh, uh, so, uh, sideline this like if you are not enabling people to be themselves and to be able to voice their thoughts uh, it will sort of inhibit their personality and inhibit their thought process also so once this is done there are very fundamental technical things like git that is where we store our code right nobody stores code in a local machine because you will lose it eventually so I think git basics and then something called command line or a shell right uh, because developers should be lazy it's a good thing because you need to automate things always people are used to doing everything manually uh, you, you like in the thoughtworks training we typically say the mouse uh, trackpad is a shock thing you should not touch it everything should be done by the keys only and every living person has a limited number of keystrokes in life so you need to be very optimal about it okay so these are some things and then you would go to a role based learning like how apsara mentioned uh, extreme programming is uh, one sort of development practices wherein you will see a lot of tdd pair programming cicd there is something called sustainable pace and all of that so if you go to wikipedia you will find a good article on that and slowly like i said you need to make them comfortable work in a like a group or a team context as well and uh, maybe if you can simulate a client context right because clients typically uh, have certain like constraints in terms of timeline uh, culture say like delivery pressure and then value so then you are not starting with answers you're starting with possibilities and then uh, you are sort of in a way trying to create value and also demonstrate that value is actually useful so that way fundamentals then your role based skills and then i would say like a customer context and then underlying everything is the cultural part thank you chance for your reply uh, so i have another Sorry. yeah so we just what Please we will do, do uh, post this yeah. webinar uh, we will send a uh, you know a write up which we would right. you know want colleges to go through and start off and maybe uh, we will include few udemy courses there the basic ones at least that the team can start looking at at least before we again right. connect and and see of the the way forward at least these things can be uh, passed on so we will do that sure uh, so the next is more of a comment from uh, ms chansi rani uh, she's saying that she has this is a women's engineering college in warangal she would like to collaborate on that front so i will be sure to pass on the details after this uh, session to the thoughtworks team anytime uh, uh, I have a few questions uh, which are similar. How do we approach you? Is there a contact that we can get? 
uh yeah that's so the thing is uh, like thought works uh, careers and you know it's it's available everywhere like if you go to the website you you can reach out to the uh, the the campus recruitment team and you can talk to them as well uh what happens with the different internship programs and specifically the one which we are here for today is uh, we are connected with face we are partnering with them and we are actually uh, we are doing training along with them so it's our team which which is there and doing the training so it really helps there so you are connect with face you are connect directly with thoughtworks any of that uh, definitely works uh, so right. that's okay you can always uh, reach out to you re reach out to us over linkedin which a lot of you have already right. done and i have connected you to the uh, campus recruitment team as well i think i'd like to highlight that uh, uh, the early uh, careers team is different from the recruitment team at thoughtworks so I, I i would encourage them not to be conflated together uh, so there is a separate recruitment team at thoughtworks which takes care of campus recruitment and placements so if you are looking for a connect there it may be best to reach out uh, for hiring through uh, linkedin uh, you could also uh, you know if you have any specific queries on what was discussed today in terms of partnerships in certain specific areas you can always uh, send an email to hello at facepulse.in which is where you will be getting most of your newsletters and we'll be sure to pass it on to the thoughtworks team and uh, try to uh, you know pass it on to the appropriate person within the team right. sure. uh, just a few questions uh, uh, from mr uh, rakesh how does a, a graduate trainee's career progress over time within thoughtworks uh, i think we both can answer that <laughs> me and chance um, first of all i think i would like to say that uh, the way graduates are uh, treated at thoughtworks and the way they are pushed to do more and the way they are encouraged uh, first of all it makes them really a competent individual uh, and and i'm i'm telling you this because it makes a lot of difference in their personal life as well like how how they are doing professionally right so that's one part of it uh they very at a very early age they learn to develop software in an amazing way in a good way in a better way right also because they don't know any other way this becomes normal for them so there is no unlearning that they have to do they just learn this and they uh, and and they get in the habit of developing software in a in a very good way and why i am going on saying this uh, in a good way is because uh, the tdd practices the pair programming practices a lot of other practices really help in developing a good software so once you start doing that at a young uh, age uh, you know you can you also end up advocating for it very very soon right uh, very soon they have an individual impact uh, after some time they start having a team impact because they start doing everything at the team level either they are doing cdci for the team they are doing ui development for the team they are helping the qas on the team they are helping a ba uh, analyze something so they you know they start having a team impact uh, very soon after that they start having an impact at an office level at an account level where uh, or at a community level where they are sharing what they have learned they start uh, attending events they start doing events they start sharing their they start becoming uh, thought leaders in their own space whatever they understand and very soon they have their impact outside of thoughtworks as well in the uh, larger it industry world and uh, we have seen multiple of them take this path and reach there within 7 to 8 years uh, of their career uh, so yes that's uh, that's that's the thing that i have but yeah chance if you want to add something i think you covered most of it up sir i would like to say that uh, that self learning habit and then critical thinking all these uh, nuances that you learn won't stop i think apsara me sonam are still learning as of today as well and because yeah. technology landscape is changing very often our customers challenges are changing very often and i would say we are in the process of creating this human chain right wherein a trainee or a student comes in as a grad and they are more in the learning phase and then eventually they grow to the contribute slash learn phase as an intern and then they go to the contribute phase right and then eventually they'll be mapped as a mentor to the next set of trainees and that's what we want to create here okay thank you uh, i think we're running short of time i'll just take one last question and close uh, the event uh, so this sure. is more of a question and a comment first the question part is uh, do thought workers get to travel abroad as they do in other companies for on site uh, second is a, more of a feedback from mr kiran saying thought works seems like an amazing company and has a great culture kudos to you 
Thank you, Mr. Yeah, so, uh, I, I think uh, the borders are closed, otherwise we travel. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> uh, yes, yes, we are a global company. Uh, we also do a lot of offshore uh, development, which means our a lot of our clients come from different markets like UK market or the uh, the ASEAN market or the uh, uh, US, the North America market. Uh, and we also have local market, India market. So obviously a lot of travel happens domestic and, and uh, abroad as well. And uh, uh, thanks for the uh, feedback. Um, uh, I, I Chans, you know, Sonam, we are someone who are uh, witnessing ThoughtWorks. Uh, I am seeing it from 13 years now. Uh, I have seen a change in myself. Uh, and I, like I said, I am a proud thought worker. Uh, not, a, not even a single day has been where I don't feel uh, uh, you know that there are new challenge challenges with me i never never feel bored uh, it is nev never have i it have has it occurred that oh my god i have done this so many times now can i see something somewhere else every time every year there is a new challenge that i have the way i've been uh, encouraged uh, pushed to do, do new things the way i have been supported with two young girls uh, with a less less than three years of age when i moved into operations and i was doing the, the toughest role at that point of time I remember how how I was supported and how I end up giving the support to uh, everyone else. And when it comes to all of this, it's not just only talking about maternity. We talk about paternity also. We talk about men as well, and then how they uh, end up uh, helping their uh, wife. You know, when they are uh, coming out of uh, like you know coming out of maternity, trying to join. So it's it's a world of equity. It's a world of equity. Uh, obviously, we have to do intentionally more to get women into tech because the numbers are really, really less. Once we come there, I think it's again, we'll come into equity. Uh, but it has changed all, all of us professionally and personally as well. So yeah, for me, it has been a transformation. Uh, two, two I think, uh, small points I'll add, uh, Vijay, if we have time. Sure. One is, uh, yeah, prior to ThoughtWorks, uh, I used to mainly consult for US customers. So I have traveled to the US many times at that time. And um, also, for me, maybe it's a very trivial thing, but for me, any uh, people outside of India used to be clients, right? So after joining ThoughtWorks, it was a fundamental shift that we are a global team. And then uh, people outside India also can be a colleagues one. And then I got to travel to Singapore and to UK. So I could really understand the and match the cultural differences uh, with other people as well. And their like work life balance or their work style and uh, what the value in life. So all of this helped me. And one of the thing was uh, prior to coming to ThoughtWorks for me, the experience with like a uh, transgender people used to be at like a, a as a traffic signal, right? When it was more of fear, more of unknowns and I didn't know much about these things at home, but now having them as colleagues, uh, seeing a like a bathroom for the third gender in office, I know it means a lot of things to different people, and they don't want to be treated as special; they want to be treated as normal. So all of things okay. have changed me as well, for sure. Yeah, yeah, right. and it's not just talks for us. It is we just we just keep working on it. Like the the our onboarding, uh, you know, our next onboarding uh, training program that's happening uh out of 25 there are four transgenders in that we believe in it and we have and we start off and 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 we learn we might do mistakes but we learn and we we you know go ahead with i think with that uh, you know great insight into the culture at thoughtworks i think i should call it preeminent uh in the indian hr and talent space having interacted with multiple organizations I can easily say that you're one of the front runners in not just having a best place to work, but also a very progressive, uh, liberal kind of a mindset to, uh, you know, to inclusivity is the word I'd like to use here. And I think you've truly demonstrated that in your culture. And I hope many colleges and institutions send their graduates uh, to ThoughtWorks and it's going to be a mutually beneficial relationship. On that note, I'd like to thank all the audiences who have participated in today's webinar. Most importantly, the guests of today, uh, Apsara, Chan, and Sonam, uh, for taking the time out of their daily schedule and uh, participate in this interaction in what I believe will be one of, uh, one of the firsts so that we hope to meet again and uh, take this interaction further. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks all. a lot. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.